Welcome to the All Around Joe podcast, where we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all around self improvement junkie. I actually already recorded this podcast once, but you know how sometimes you just get something done and you're like, man, I could have done a better job with that. So here we go. I went out, did a 10 round workout with 200 meters of running and three power cleans at 185, and was like, man, let's just get this done again. So if you are watching this, then you can tell that I am soaking wet because I was doing the barbell work and the running actually in the rain. What I would do is I'd run the 200 meters and the barbell would be in the garage, but I couldn't do the actual cleans in the garage. So I'd roll it out into the rain, do the three cleans, roll it back in and do the run. So that's why I am soaking wet right now. But this podcast is all about tips for better sleep because it is such an important thing. And I feel like it comes up in my life all the time. And when something like that comes up in my life all the time, then I have to share about it. So I've known a lot of stuff about sleep improvement, what it takes to improve your sleep, and the benefits of sleeping. But I went into a deep dive reading several articles from other people to bring that information into you so that we can give you some benefits and we can give you some actionable items that you can start using today to improve your sleep. But before we get started, this podcast is brought to you by the Get Better Project, which is my high-end at-home workout program, which gives you the workouts information and nutrition information that I am doing myself on a daily basis. I actually do the dumbbell kettlebell workout, which only takes three pieces of equipment, two 50-pound dumbbells for me and a 70-pound kettlebell. And Emily does those with 35s and a 53-pound kettlebell, but it only takes three pieces of equipment. But not only that, I program bodyweight workouts every day, the kettlebell dumbbell workout every day, and a full-blown, full-equipment workout every day as well. So if you're interested in that, if you want to do what I'm doing to get my results every single day, go to the getbetterproject.com slash getbetter and join us today. We would love to have you. All right, I'm also going to be announcing in the next week or two about another relationship that I have that I'm super stoked about with an awesome company. Oh man, I can't wait to tell you guys about this. And I'm going to be having some discount codes for you as well as it relates to that product. So make sure you keep on listening to the All Around Joe podcast and following me on social media, especially Instagram at All Around Joe to stay up to date with what's going on. Man, oh man, and not to mention, I just had the Inside Tracker giveaway. We had somebody win the Inside Tracker Ultimate Test, which is so fantastic. But if you guys didn't win that, remember that you can still get 10% off at Inside Tracker any of their tests by using the code All Around Joe. There's a ton of people that have been cashing in that discount code lately, and I'm sure that they are being enlightened by the information that they've gotten from doing a simple inside tracker blood test. I know that it has virtually changed my life, how I eat, how I train, all of that good stuff. So I highly recommend that people go to inside tracker and use the code all around Joe. Without further ado, let's jump right into this tips for better sleep. Some of the benefits of sleep that you should know about our sleep can reduce stress. It can help you with weight loss. Yes, that's right. Getting enough sleep can help you to lose weight. Body fat is what we're talking about here. It improves memory. So you're thinking better. You have more energy. Who doesn't want more energy from sleeping better? You have less hunger cravings. So it also helps promote that. So if you're having trouble with binge eating, that type of thing, sleeping more and better can help. It may reduce cancer. It reduces heart attacks and strokes. Who wants those? It may reduce depression. I know I don't like to be depressed, so why would you want to be depressed? It improves concentration so you can do your work better, faster. It improves athletic performance. Who doesn't want bigger, badder muscles? And last but not least on my list here, it improves glucose metabolism. So if you want to avoid type 2 diabetes, getting better sleep is very important for you. So this was just a list of benefits, but there are so many more things that sleep will improve. And we're going to go into how you can actually improve your sleep starting today with about 10 or 12 tips here. But we can even go deep deeper in here. If you have more questions, head over to allaroundjoe.com slash 201. That's allaroundjoe.com slash 201. If you want to get the nitty gritty or nitty gritty, or you need more information or you have questions. All right, here we go. First thing, sun exposure after waking up is 
beneficial to releasing cortisol in your body. So one of the things you can do is you can go outside and do 30 minutes of activity right when you first get up. Well, maybe not right when you first get up, but let's say you get up, you go to the bathroom, you drink some water, you have your coffee, and then you go out in the sun and you get some activity in. And the reason I mentioned activity is because if you do 30 minutes of moderate, let's say 65% of maximum effort activity, of aerobic activity because 65% is not going to be all that hard, but 65% of your max aerobic activity, it has been shown to enhance sleeper enhance sleep later on the day when you go to bed. So the sunlight exposure is going to jumpstart your cortisol release, which is going to make you feel good. And the activity is also going to help with the cortisol, but it's going to help you to sleep better later on that night. So you just need some moderate activity, not that hard charging activity. Actually, hard charging activity can be not so beneficial for you. And if you're doing that, you should probably take a nap during the day to help that situation but next up, we've got a regular time breakfast is actually really good for your circadian rhythm. So we're not talking about our intermittent fasting group here. If you are having trouble with sleep, maybe intermittent fasting is not the best route for you because that breakfast is going to help with your circadian rhythm. And we love having a good circadian rhythm. So if you're looking for a schedule, you get up, you have your, your morning bathroom, your water, your coffee. You go out in the sun and you do 30 minutes of aerobic activity. Let's say you go for a nice little jog or some something on a rower or a bike in the sun if you can. I know that sometimes you might have some rain and that's not ideal, but you do it as much and often as you can get this done. Then you have a regularly timed breakfast to reset your cardi, car, <laughs> circadian rhythm, excuse me, and then you go through the rest of your day. All right. And here's where it gets interesting again. 30 minutes to two and a half hours of intense exercise at 50 to 80% max. And it keeps going. Keep listening. Four to eight hours prior to bed or 30 minutes of high intensity. Let's call it 85 to 90% of max intensity exercise. Three to four hours prior to bed has been proven to improve sleep. So let's break that down for you a little bit. You want to have at least 30 minutes of moderate to intense activity, eight to eight hours to three hours before you go to sleep. So basically what that means is afternoon to early evening, you don't want to have activity within three hours of going to sleep, but sometime in the afternoon. And ideally you make it to be pretty intense. So this is going to be your more hard charging activity. Think of it as like a CrossFit workout, high intensity training, maybe running some hills, doing some sprint intervals. That type of activity is going to get your heart rate jacked so that you're going to feel tired. All right do that in the afternoon. There's also some other studies that have shown that, that is the time of day that you're actually going to be able to produce the best results from your activity. So you're going to have more accuracy. You're going to have better muscular contractions. You're going to have more of an opportunity to have a better workout. And if you're getting good sleep, then that workout is even going to be better, right? Because having not so good sleep is going to make you lower energy. You're going to have less athletic performance. So it all goes around in this big circle. Here's something that's going to be interesting for you guys. Well, maybe, maybe not. An early evening cold shower or cold soak has been shown to improve your sleep. So this all kind of goes in a rhythm, get it? A rhythm, kind of like a circadian rhythm, but we're talking about a rhythm to have better sleep here. What we're talking about with this rhythm, we have the morning routine rhythm, is the afternoon rhythm where you have your intense or more intense activity, 30 minutes to 2.5 hours at 50 to essentially 90% of max then you have a cold shower or at least a lukewarm shower because there's a times in the day when your body is going to be at its highest body temperature. And that is not going to be ideal for sleeping. So if we can lower our body temperature when we have those times, then we're going to have a better night's sleep. 
And I'm obviously not getting into the weeds here. I'm not getting into the super details. And we can if that's what you want. But I know that a lot of times the listeners, you just want to get the information so that you can put it into play immediately. And that's fine. But if you want more information, I can direct you to some really awesome articles. And I have them in the show notes. So if you go to allaroundjo.com slash 201, you can get... I have three great articles, including one from Ben Greenfield that is just fantastic on how to get to the deep, deep information on what's happening and why you would do these particular things to sleep better. But right now we're talking just about exercising, getting into a cold shower or a lukewarm shower to lower your body temperature so that you will have better sleep. All right, so you work out, you're sweaty, you go hop into a nice cool shower, it's going to lower your body temperature, you're setting yourself up for a great night's sleep. Then as the sun is setting or as your day is winding down, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting rid of all of our, your computer screens, your TVs, your e-readers, all of those things, including if you look up at the fluorescent light in your house, you're going to want to try and ideally make it a red light, but I'm not going to tell everybody to go change their light bulbs every night. Just make sure that you have less intense light or dim light, or maybe you're going to go with candlelight as the sun goes down if you want to improve your sleep. So see if you can get some dimmers and or try using the blue light blocking glasses. I've got some great ones from Swannies, but you can get a cheap pair on Amazon and it will make a world of difference. It will help your body to block or your eyes to block the blue light. This coming from your screens, it's even coming from your house. A lot of people don't talk about that, but the lights that we have in our house, if they're really the, these bright fluorescent lights that a lot of us have, they're going to help our body to stay awake and we don't want that. So consider getting these blue light blocking glasses. I have them in my bag at all times because it go, they go with me everywhere. All right, so without this, the reason that you want it is because your body will not properly produce melatonin which is going to make you fall asleep better, faster. It produces all kinds of good things that we're not going to get into right now, but I'm sure that you've heard about it and that you know that you want to have more melatonin. So that is what is going to happen if you shut these things down when the sun goes down or within an hour of when you want to fall asleep. So shut them down, put in your blue light blocking glasses, relax, read a paper book, something like that. Go into a sleep, sleep routine, which is a fantastic idea of doing it. What I will do is I'll put in an, a book in my headphones and I'll listen to that without looking at my screen, put it on a sleep timer for 30 minutes when it goes off. That's when I usually take my headphones out and I conk out to sleep. It works great. I usually try and take Tim Ferriss' advice to listen to a fictional book that's not going to get me too excited and amped up to you know, go crush business or do a workout or something like that as I'm trying to fall asleep. So it's more of a relaxing fictional book, but I've found that that works wonders. Here we go from a supplement note. You can try taking 300 to 500 milligrams of magnesium. I personally really like to take the ZMA, so zinc magnesium supplements, and I've noticed that those will help me sleep a lot better, actually. Sometimes you feel like you conk out, you dream crazy dreams. And if you need a idea for what supplement to take, go ahead and hit me up in the show notes or shoot me an email and I'll send you a link to some of them that I recommend. It's also been shown that athletes can be depleted in zinc and magnesium. So if you are following this whole routine and you're working out with you know, what's going to end up being like an hour to three hours of exercise per day, you're probably going to need some more zinc and magnesium in your life anyway, which is going to have more benefits than just sleeping. But we're going to be talking about taking 300 to 500 milligrams of magnesium just to go to sleep and to sleep better. So try supplementing with that. Avoid eating large amounts of carbs and protein especially if you haven't had a good workout. But even if you have, try and avoid eating large amounts of carbs and protein late in the day, okay? So let's say like within three hours of going to bed, try not to have a big spike of carbohydrates or protein because that's going to spike your blood sugar and then your insulin levels. And then you're going to have a harder time falling asleep, which is what nobody wants. This includes having dessert after your dinner. So I know that there's a lot of you listening that probably like to have the routine of having your dessert after dinner and you're probably having dinner kind of late and then you're trying to go to bed and you're not falling asleep as fast as you would like to. 
here's the solution to that. What I would recommend is you're doing this early afternoon or I'm sorry, late afternoon, early evening workout because it's going to get you the most results. Have that dessert that you like after your workout. It will do two things for you. It'll keep your blood sugar not spiked later on at night and you will be eating it at an optimal time for your body to actually utilize that set of nutrients with the expenditure that you've just done from the workout. So have that dessert right after your workout rather than having it as a post-dinner treat because that is hampering your ability to sleep well. Try having high fiber in your dinner routine. There's studies that have shown that the higher the fiber you have, the better you sleep. So that means eating more vegetables, and vegetables are great for you anyway, right? You're gonna get vitamins, minerals, all these nutrients from vegetables, but they're also loaded with fiber. So think green, leafy, multicolored vegetables with your dinner, having a bunch of them. They also are loaded with magnesium usually. So you wanna have these vegetables, it's gonna be high fiber, it's gonna help you to sleep better. Also, what I will do as a trick is I'll have some psyllium husk with my last meal, which will do wonders not only for sleeping, but it will help you to get into a good pooping routine. So it, that will lower, well, it depends on what kind of fiber you're, we're talking about here, but it, the soluble fiber will lower the glycemic index of your foods, but it will also help you to have a good regular pooping schedule, which is fantastic. If you don't have one right now, you got to get one. You got to try some of this fiber. I have psyllium husk. I recommend getting it at Amazon. I have the link on the show notes at allaroundjoe.com slash 201. You can get the exact fiber that I take on a regular basis, and I highly recommend it to everybody, especially if you've got the poop problems and even if you are eating all of the vegetables, which I recommend doing both of. It just makes life better, sleep better, poop better. It is good stuff. Last but not least, the last thing that we're talking about here, guys, and things that I've talked about before is for goodness sakes, black out your bedroom already. Come on, get in the routine. You guys know what you need to do. It is super easy. You can pay for the high price thing, have the contractor come in, drop down the push button electronic blackout shades, or you can go to the fabric store like I do, get some felt. I usually do a double-sided felt. It costs you hardly anything. You take some push pins and you hang it over your windows or light producing objects in your room. Make sure that you also get rid of all lights, not just from outside lights, but any kind of clocks or blinking lights or anything. Put some tape over that. You will thank me 10 times over if you start doing this because having a completely black room is going to change the way that you sleep. And it will be awesome. Trust me, I've been doing it for years now. I try to avoid sleeping in any kind of light environment room at any possible opportunity. And I recommend that you do it as well. If you have any noise that's coming from anywhere, whether you sleep next to a snore or it's just a noisy environment like it was when I used to live in New York City, get yourself either some noise canceling headphones that you can wear, which would be twofold awesome because you could listen to some binaural beats Look up binaural beats if you're curious about what those are and look for a sleep version of binaural beats that you can put in your noise canceling headphones or you can just get some earplugs. And even if you don't like wearing earplugs, trust me, if you wear them for a few nights, you will forget that they are there. You'll get totally used to it and it'll be totally fine. Lastly, if you cannot black out your room or you can't get your spouse or your significant other on board with putting up felt in your room, which is bummer for you because they should be all on board with sleeping really well as well. Get a good set of sleep masks. All right. Everybody should have some sleep masks because it's great for traveling, whether you're on a plane or whether you're sleeping in an Airbnb and you cannot black out the room or your hotel is not very smart and they don't have blackout curtains, which is like a hotel that I recently stayed at in Italy. I couldn't believe it. There was no blackout curtains at all. It was just big curtains that were see-through and the parking lot lights even came glaring through. It wasn't even the daylight. It was just ridiculous. They didn't have anything like that. So make sure that you have those things in your arsenal. You will thank me for it. This will make your life so much better. You can potentially live longer, have less heart attacks, have more energy, um, have all kinds of benefits of rebuilding your body. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about was ideal amount of sleep. For adults, the ideal amount of sleep is typically going to be seven to nine hours. A lot of times, I believe that you're going to know how much sleep that you actually need, though, 
I know that if I just let myself sleep and wake up naturally, my body will get into its own rhythm and I won't oversleep. I won't undersleep. It will be the right amount of sleep for me. Some nights that will end up being seven, seven and a half hours, usually close to seven and a half. And sometimes it will be up to nine hours and that's totally fine. If I haven't had a lot of sleep for the last few days and sometimes it will be up to 10 hours, but your body gets into this rhythm and it knows how much sleep you need. And I know that that can be hard for those of you that are working with an alarm clock and having to get up at a certain amount of, a certain time, but just get into the routine of going to bed earlier so that you, you wake up with a little bit of a buffer for your day. So you're not just hitting the alarm clock, hopping up a bed and running for the door, but you go to sleep early enough and you get into the sleep rhythm so that you can go to sleep early enough so that your body actually wants to go to sleep early enough so that you will fall asleep quickly and then you can wake up either with an alarm easily or before your alarm even goes off feeling super rested. So like I mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of different really interesting sleep hacks that we haven't really talked about here. But if you get all of these things done and you implement them into your life, which is super easy, you just have to start doing it and make it your norm. Then we can talk about some of the hacks that you can use. Like I mentioned, like the binaural beats, the supplement hacks, and there are even some more things that are super cool. Like I'm trying to get myself one of these chili pads right now, which circulates water underneath you to keep your body nice and cool as you sleep. Seems like it'd be really, really an advantage to have in the van when we can't really control coolness temperature. Let's say that we're in a place that stays warm at night. If I could have this circulating 55 degrees below me, that would keep my body temperature lower, at least on the bottom side. That seems like it'd be super beneficial. And I know a ton of high achievers, high athletic performers that are using these things. So I will keep you posted on how that goes and hopefully I can get my hands on one. I actually just sent them an email. So if any of you guys know anybody that's working there, let them know that I sent that email over. I'd like to get my hands on one and uh, create a win-win relationship for all of us all around at All Around Joe. Woo. All right, guys, make sure that you check out the Get Better Project if you'd like to do the workouts that I am doing every day. But don't be intimidated because I have a body weight version that is super scaled down to the people that haven't been doing much exercise that version of what I'm doing and it takes you and starts you there and it moves you all the way up to what I'm doing or even beyond what I'm doing so that you can lose weight, look good, feel good, plug it right into these workouts that we talked about that you should be doing for ideal sleep. All you have to do is head over to getbetterproject.com slash get better. If you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. Let me know. That is all. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, have a great week. The All Around Joe podcast, where we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all around self improvement. We'll see you all.